When a killer vlogs his murders, you guys ready to be sad? Any, anyone, any, 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 any. We haven't done the part that I'm not looking forward to. My husband's great. He really is. He's very um, <clears throat> respectful to me. I mean, he spoils me. He takes Famous care of me. Famous last words. I am pretty, <clears throat> pretty close to that time. This is what I got to do. To, I don't even question it anymore. At this point, I don't know what's going to happen. It, I may get uh, caught right away. I mean, I could basically be dead in two weeks or three This is weeks. what hooked me. I love seeing your reactions. I do react pretty hard. Now, all the other reactors out there, like, sure, they react. But no one reacts as hard as me. Rock hard. I don't know. It's all a chance at this point. Hey, guys. <laughs> nice. Dude, this guy's already a Chad, just shooting, shooting some guns at the ground. Oh, oh my gosh. Though his family didn't yet know it, something was off with Peter Keller. Mm. What follows is found footage that just might be some of the most disturbing recordings ever filmed. Documented like a YouTube video, the video diaries Peter created provide a rare glimpse into the mind of a killer and document how something that may have begun as an innocent hobby ultimately manifested as unbelievable cruelty. A hobby? Yeah. Stuff. Was he starting out as a hobby? Like he was gonna, his hobby was gonna be killing, and then he wanted to be a professional killer. Is that what? Is that what happened? Hey, babe, I'm a professional reactor, dude. That's what I do now. Anytime someone asks me my job title, it's like, hey, yo, what do you do? I'm a, I'm a professional reactor. Call and, me asparagus. And then every single time they say react. You know, it's like it's like when you're like when you're a comedian, you say, "Oh, you're a comedian. You must be funny. Tell me a joke." It's the same shit, dude. I'm so tired of it. Like all these fans coming up to me, dude, dude, do the react thing. Do the react thing. And I always have to do my react thing. It sucks. Oh, whoa! It's a lot better in real life. The majority of the following footage has never been seen before. It has been analyzed by a licensed professional counselor. Okay. I'm sure Looks you have like all the fans working. coming Just up to you all the, the time. Out. Guys, I get recognized every time I walk outside. It's, it, it's so hard to deal with, man. It's just, I'm suffering from success. Since it's the first time. <laughs> Watching myself, I, I hate watching myself. It's like, man, that's the way other people see me. So it's gonna take some getting used to. Not used to talking into a camera. Let's see, so here you can look at the trail. There's not much of a trail. I try to keep it as hidden as I can. So other people will stay off of it, which has worked so far. It's pretty far out, so... Is this in, like, a public area or something? Nobody's been up here yet. I usually come up with a... between a 30 and 40 pound pack. Every time I bring a load of something up, I'm actually starting to get a lot. I really can't tell when you're being sarcastic or not. All right, here, let me, let me tell you. When I'm saying something ridiculous, normally that's sarcasm. Like, for example, saying that video games are the reason that that's the problem with our country. That's pretty ridiculous to say. Or me saying that I go outside and get recognized every single time I walk outside. That's pretty ridiculous for someone who only has, a, you know, what? I get, I, I get like 90 viewers on Twitch. Up here. But that whole thing I just said was sarcasm. Try to make it as easy as I can during the transition time. So far, I've got uh, 
A bed. That was me being bed, sarcastic. Mattress. With blankets and pillows and clothes and stuff to keep me comfortable. Why? So we'll see how long I last doing this. I don't know. Just what exactly what Peter doing? was doing in North Bend, Washington isn't yet clear. It's incredibly rare to have self-recorded footage of a killer and is especially interesting in this case because the scope of Peter's chilling plans could hardly be imagined from the casual conversations he has with- Do you like being recognized? I mean, if I ever get recognized, I'll tell you. The camera. Basically come up here on the weekends or- on I probably Friday, wouldn't weekday, like it. Whenever the weather permits or depending on what I'm doing at least once a week. And I tend to stay up here for about, uh, well, with travel time, probably around nine hours a day, or each time, which is a long time. When he wasn't traversing the wilderness with his camera and dog, 41-year-old Peter was also a father and a husband. Oh, he's a father hey, too, okay. Awesome. Okay, I got this face. Cause you guys won't let me take that many pictures. He and his wife, Lynette, had an 18-year-old daughter named Kayleen, and the three appear to be a normal, happy family. Hi. Are you videotaping here? Yep. Let's do a lot of videotape, and then I just cut all the junk out. <laughs> However, Peter's mysterious project in the woods would eventually take a terrible toll on his day-to-day -day life. Kayleen Keller. But what project? <laughs> So how do you feel? Like, the, the video said it started out as a hobby. What was he trying to do? Make, like, an underground tent? <laughs> <laughs> no more Abundant. high school! Yay! Feel different? No. You don't feel different? You got a new life ahead of you. No more freaking school. Oh, high school. Yeah, you got to tell tomorrow to get your stuff out of the house. Oh, so. no. She's been with us forever. I'm sorry, Carson. Forever. Kayleen graduated high school just a few months after her father started recording his video diaries. Oh. And was on track to start at Bellevue College in the fall. Gross. In addition to her interest in environmental preservation and gaming technology, she also appears to have shared her father's interest in camera. Gaming? Cracked a start at Bellevue College in the fall. In addition to her interest in environmental preservation and gaming technology, she's she a gamer! Also appears to have shared her father's interest in cameras. Girls don't and game. dabbled in the hobby of videotaping as well. Can you get a picture of me and sell me on eBay? Uh -huh. I'm so sorry. What are you doing? Some good camera work. Come on, talk. Lynette also sometimes used the camera to film videos she uploaded to YouTube. And a YouTuber. Hey everyone. My little puppy's looking outside. She an unboxer? Okay, I got a lot of stuff to show you guys that I'm going to put in my store. I'm so excited. Oh, she has this an Etsy store? Bag too. And I had so much fun making these too. You guys got a lot of products in here. But I want to first show you. Look at Dino. He just uh, got a doggo. A couple days ago, my husband was like, he's looking too scruffy. I am a very shy person. And I doing need to get these a photo of her biting a controller to really believe her. helps me open myself because I figured if somebody doesn't want to watch it, then don't watch it. I'm not forcing you to. So these Yeah, exactly, chat. Fucking assholes saying mean shit to me all the time, calling me fat, ugly, and bald. It cuts deep. If you don't like me, just leave. These videos really help, and he really helped me. <clears throat> While Peter worked to refurbish computers, Lynette struggled with medical issues, and as a result, wasn't able to work full-time. The Gatorade, full -time. the Cheez-Its. My husband, oh, a few months ago, went out and bought me this big recliner for my back, and I'm just now starting to use it. He's so happy. Usually, I just sit on the left table. I love this chair. <laughs> He's here, he's supporting me, he takes care of me. He, even though I can't go back to work and I'm home in pain all the time, he gave me my scrapbooking room with my dream come true. She made and sold custom paper flowers and shared her scrapbooking hobby in local fairs to bolster the family's income. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. 
pretty much this is my anniversary present. I'm so thankful that my husband was able to give me that so I could um, stock up on supplies for me. And I also got some stuff for you guys too. Even my husband was looking at this and was just like, oh my gosh, look at the detail. From an outside perspective, it appeared that although the family faced challenges, they were sticking together and making things work. But as later events would reveal, all wasn't going as well as it appeared. Yeah, you can watch me open Everything changed when he so started heavy. making his little hut in the woods. That uh, works good. <clears throat> this impressive structure, affectionately nicknamed Camp Keller, was what kept Peter occupied in the woods for so long. Disguised as part of the hillside, the only thing that might give its presence away is a temporary tarp stretched over part of the roof. But Peter took care to conceal that with brush. This is well, something why? I wanted to do probably since I was a teenager. Kill someone? Home underground somewhere. So I didn't have to live around people. One of my projects. Oh. Ah, oh, okay. Today, let's take, take all this wood that I've cut up recently and stack it up, pull it down. So if somebody stumbles out Bunker here, dudes are always it, weird, uh, yeah. <clears throat> not as noticeable. Boys will be boys. Yeah, you're going to be saying that after he murders his wife, too. Ah, come on. Boys will be boys. I mean, come on. Ev uh, come on. Who hasn't made a bunker out in the woods to kill their wife and, and hide her in there? Boys will be boys, you know? Just now, I have the means I'm able to actually pay for it. I've spent a lot of money on this so far. Thousands of dollars. Thousands more on guns and other stuff, other hardware I'm going to need. Epic. Everything I can think of. The bunker was a shocking feat of engineering, considering all of Peter's supplies were either gathered from the forest around him or carried in from his house, which was about an hour's hike away. Jesus. <clears throat> This is kind of an outside look. Just my wood pile on this side. Instead of fixing his receding hairline, he became a killer? Oh, shit. In addition to the tool... Guys, I need to hurry up and fix my receding hairline before I become a killer. ...and materials he needed to build the bunker. Peter carried a significant amount of food, drinks, and creature comforts into the camp. He brought enough to set Just up a kitchenette, complete with an emergency here. vodka stash. A emergency? You cut an emergency vodka? What, what's going to happen? The entire complex the was powered with a generator, which Peter somehow managed to bring up the mountain. He even went out of his way to engineer a wood-burning stove made out of an inverted metal garbage can. He rigged a chimney Man, that to place funnel looks the like smoke shit. up and out of the residence. This smoke would ultimately provide a valuable clue as to the camp's location. Other highlights of Peter's stash include multiple five-gallon buckets, which could not have been easy to move, heavy-duty chains, and a hacksaw. But as impressive as the wilderness construction may be, the question remains as to why Peter built it in the first place. Yeah. I just feel like I'm getting knock back every time financially ah okay so so okay so i see his i see his reasoning here his family's struggling financially so he decides to spend thousands of dollars selfishly on building a bunker in the woods and buying a bunch of guns and so he could kill his wife and then no more financial problems Oh, okay. I get it now. I get it now. Okay. My wife is just, just going to suck all the money. Oh my God, dude. Oh my God. What a bitch. What a goddamn bitch, dude. Well, my wife's taking all my money. Got to kill her. Only solution we have. Oh, I, I definitely can't talk to my wife about it and see if we could come to an agreement. 
I definitely can't divorce my wife, right? Like, those things are too hard. I'll just kill her. Oh my God, dude. The, the logic. Yeah, that I have. <laughs> and I'm so excited because I can actually afford these, um, these, these, these deals. My husband, <laughs> he gave me some money to, to go in here. So I'm like, so excited. Yeah. So he offered, he didn't have to. Excited. All right, I'm getting ready to move one of these big beams in. Uh, this thing is pretty heavy. It's soaked with water, which makes them very heavy. Makes it a real bitch. Let's see, I met him when I was in high school, but I just, you know, wasn't interested. And then I met him again. And he was so sweet. We became like best friends. He said one of these days he wanted to get married oh, and have so kids. Sad, and dude. he asked me what I wanted. And I said, I don't ever want to get married. So then my See, the sister sad part is she's just happy having a family and being with him. She doesn't give a shit that they don't have much money. And she works her ass off to make extra money so that they can survive. But she still seems very happy. But not this fucking asshole. Sir. We were getting along at the time. Oh. <laughs> she really liked him. <clears throat> and she said, well, you, you got to just, you know, you're going to regret it if you don't. So I was like, okay. <laughs> then three months later, he started talking to him about marriage. And I was like, dude, I told you I don't want to get married. <laughs> Stop pressuring me. We've only been to, with, we've only officially been together for three months. Actually, start oh, so he's the one who pushed the marriage onto her. So, but now he wants to kill her because he's tired of her taking his money. Dude, all of this makes so much sense. Started within a month, and I was just like, "No, you got to stop." So finally, a little over three months, he asked me to marry him. I was like, "Of course, I'll marry you!" And I grabbed the ring and put it on my finger. <laughs> I was just so excited. Jesus. That's my story. Yeah, no shit, of my it's not going to work. You're weak. Husband, who is, you know, who is my husband? Who's the love of my life? At this point, I don't know what's going to happen. It... Dude, he looks like a goddamn thumb. Like, just shave your head at this point, man. Like, he looks utterly disgusting. She looks pretty and she's nice. He looks like a goddamn troll. I may get uh, caught right away. I mean, I could basically be dead in two weeks or three weeks. I don't know. It's all up to chance at this point. So I don't think anyone. Dude, imagine being the daughter and seeing these videos. Knows where I'm at. But if they put it together, who knows? At this point, I have to take that chance. So it's just going to be a point of, you know, go as far as I can. My, I do have my escape, and that's death. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. So, I'm getting to the point where... Dude, just they're, all, they're all selfish cowards. That's the sad part. All, all the people that do this shit are just selfish cowards. Live. They're pathetic. <clears throat> pay bills and live as a civilian and go to work. He's a great guy. He, uh... You know, he stuck around with me. I'm, uh, you know, some, some guys are kind of leave when you get that, you know, it's, it's part of your vows. But anyways, I don't want to get on to that. I just, that just freaks me out. It's actually more comfortable for me to think about living out here, um, robbing banks, pharmacies, just taking what I want. Damn. For as long as I can. What a badass, dude. What a badass. Exciting. What a badass. It won't be boring. And I don't have to worry about Lynette or Kayleen. And everything will be taken care of. It'll just be me. Why did he mention both of their names? I just realized it says murders. It doesn't just say murder. He's going to kill them both, isn't he? 
Peter's complaints are all too common, but could indicate the presence of major depressive disorder. Additionally, Peter is doing a lot of fidgeting in this video, signifying that despite what he's saying out loud, his thoughts might be giving him a lot of anxiety. Perhaps this stems from the fact that, as some of Peter's cryptic comments end, there's a much darker aspect to his fantasy than he lets on. Mm, I wanted to get a video log in because we haven't done part that I'm not looking forward to. I'm getting pretty close to that time. Yeah, that, see that? See, Prospect, you're right. Like, it's fine murdering someone, but vlogging it? I'm guessing probably a couple months away, maybe three. So, yeah, I know. I can, once I do this, I could either die then. <laughs> maybe something will happen. Or a few days or weeks. Or maybe even years. My goal is to make it 10 years. But uh, that's the other Yeah, he part. ain't gonna last that long. Either to give a, to not care about dying and to still care about the project. <laughs> Peter's comment that he wants to- <clears throat> Imagine how big of a bitch you'd have to be to pressure a woman into having a family, then murdering that family when work gets a little tedious. Yeah. Survive for 10 years out in the woods complicates an already strange situation even further. He isn't just aiming to leave his day-to-day -day life and job behind. There are Lynette and Kayleen to think about, and so far, he hasn't shown any interest of bringing them along on his adventure. Yeah. Oh my god, oh my goodness. Um, you are so sweet, you guys. Sorry I'm whispering, my husband's sleeping and our little doggy's sleeping with him. Last time I was doing a video, I was talking too loud and he woke up and came out here. Part of me has a hard time even imagining doing what I'm going to do. But as I think about it, I always come up to the same conclusion every time I'm starting to get more okay with it don't don't get more okay with it other times I feel like I'm more than ready I've tried to to make it in this world and it just isn't happening I'm 40 now and I am running out of time what is what is your dumbass version of making it what what you're not you're not a CEO what you forgot to uh, you forgot to buy your NFTs? Like what? What is your version of success? Like, see, this is why people need therapy. Because he's probably the type of person who's like, oh no, therapy's for loonies, for weirdos. You know, probably coming from the guy who's gonna kill his uh, wife and child. I'd say that's pretty loony. 40? Damn, he did not age well. Yeah, it's true. He does not look 40. He looks like he's like mid-50s. I don't even question it anymore. It just seems like... Everybody... And also, 40 is not old. Like, 40 is like middle-aged, man. Like, do you realize that the majority of people can live to like 70 and 80 and so on? <clears throat> Sorry that you aged like a goddamn uh, a muffin, dude. It makes so much sense now. You know, just the more I've thought about it, the more I understand it. I don't really feel bad about it. Of course he doesn't. It's just the way it is. You know, certain don't do things muffins happen. like that. Have you guys ever seen a muffin that's like molded? That's him. This guy's a molded muffin. It caused this to happen. So, muffins deserve better. Just kind of accepted. Fair it enough. And just rolling with it. Well, this is it. Home sweet home. He's having a midlife crisis and crying that he wasn't able to finish the project that he always wanted to finish, even though he's literally doing the project that he said he always wanted to do. I don't understand this guy at all. He's an idiot. Got the lantern going so you can see a little bit, not a lot. You know, I often wonder if uh, what I'm doing is the right thing. Well, obviously it's not. And 
I think it is. Oh, of course he does. These statements, though shocking, actually align with the earlier theory that Peter was suffering from a serious depressive disorder. Yeah, he's having a midlife crisis on top of being depressed. And he's also really fucking stupid. And that combination is dangerous. You know, as I do this for hour on hour, it's like I just sit here and think about stuff. Sorry. Sorry that life just isn't perfect. Like, oh my god, like uh, I keep I said it before, everyone needs therapy, man. Everyone needs therapy. Uh I don't think it's all my fault. I think it's more Oh yeah, yeah. Blame it on your shitty childhood that you're gonna murder your uh, wife and daughter. Yeah, I had a pretty shit childhood too, man. You don't see, you don't see me killing my wife and child. That is the dumbest fucking excuse. I was just too ugly. Nobody cared. Well, no one's going to care even more now. Everyone's going to hate you. Peter's Everyone does hate you. You're the scum of the earth. No feeling off also supports the depression theory, as it's common for symptoms to emerge during adolescence. Additionally, it's known that individuals with unresolved trauma can become stuck developmentally. This could very possibly be what happened to Peter, as he previously mentioned that he'd wanted to build a camp like this since he was a teen. If he became emotionally stuck at that point in his life, it could explain his apparent resentment for his family. No, I don't... No, I mean, it. you don't really... I mean, it depends on the situation. You could have PTSD over it, but I feel like that's everyone. Everyone wants, like, wants to do something that they wish they could have done when they were a child. There's, like, so many fucking people that deal with trauma as children and think about it a lot. I don't really think that's like stunting your development. I think it's just being a human. Uh, I mean, there are, I feel like there are instances, like extreme instances where it actually does stunt your development completely. But no, this is not the case for this situation. He had a rough childhood. He And he grew up and he wanted to do something that he never got to do as a child. And now he's doing it. So that doesn't make any fucking sense that he's going to kill his wife. Most people who dealt with that stuff don't want others to suffer. Yeah, you guys want to know why I pride myself on being the best father I could possibly be? Because my dad left when I was like five. I mean, my stepdad came in and raised me, but it's like, you know what I mean? Like, and also like, if you have a bad childhood, wouldn't you want your child to have a better childhood? That's why I never understand why people who have shit childhoods grow up and then just do the same shit to their children. Like, how? How? How could you do that? It makes no fucking sense to me. Like, it, like that happened with... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to get into it. No, never mind. I'm not going to get too deep into it. Never mind. Along with the continued desire to depart from society. Yeah, basically last year has been really tough on me. They always spin that excuse like... Well, my, my childhood was way worse than yours. So I'm going to make sure you dealt with what I dealt with. So you feel my pain. It's like, what? You're punishing your child because you had a shitty childhood? I've been coming to terms. Sorry. Realizing just I'm going to stop talking about it. And there's just no hope. But uh, it's tough. Wasn't interested in anything anymore. Yeah, it's called depression, man. You could get help. I don't think killing your wife and child is a good response. Okay. Motivate myself. You're literally talking like every single dude. Oh, this irritates me so fucking much, man. This is so fucking stupid. All I did was work on this. This is the only thing that can make me feel better. 
but uh, I think I've come to terms with it. Uh, starting to feel better now. I'm not quite sure why exactly. But it's just that I'm getting this. Just kill yourself. Over. Don't take people with you. Just kill yourself. Sorry. Low tier pig? No, that's not low tier at all. What are you fucking talking about? What are you fucking talking about low tier? He kills his wife and daughter. That, it's low tier to say kill yourself to the guy who kills his wife and daughter? Yes, he should kill himself. I would way much prefer this guy to kill himself than kill his wife and daughter. I would highly prefer that. I've just yeah, he's acting like it's something he has to do. Exactly. Yeah. What I am, my situation, and kind of working through it. You know, I've tried. I always keep going back to the. No, that's the thing. He's not going to kill himself. He said he's going to kill. He's going to go through with the project, and then he's going to try to hide away for ten years. But he also says. Um, that he's, you know, if he gets caught, then he'll just die and, he'll, and he's fine with dying. So he's so much of a pussy that he's just going to kill other people and try to live out his life in his little hut that he made. Just, oh, I was, I was just making a joke about the low tier, uh, low tier God guy who said you should kill yourself now. So I was making a joke connected. Oh, I, I don't know that reference. My bad. My bad. That was my fault. Sorry, I feel gross saying kill yourself. Like, I, I do feel gross saying that. But it's like, it's the lesser of two evils. The same. <clears throat> same person I am. Low tier God is that black guy with the lightning in those memes. Oh, that picture? I guess it's oh. also because I don't have anything. I never did. No money. My looks are horrible. My husband actually gave me some money, and I was going to go out and buy some of these. But I'm going to go buy ink instead. Oh, my gosh. It's so awesome. You know you could just say no to your wife. You know you could just say, hey, honey, sorry, we don't got the money. I can't do this. Sorry, I'm trying not to get too excited because my husband's gonna be like, what are you doing? No personality. I mean, I'm okay with it. Dude, I don't get it because all he's doing is crying over himself. But he's not e he's not even planning on killing himself. Like he's it, it acts like he's like try he's making like a, a suicide note here. But all this is is He's going to kill someone else. It's like he's self-deprecating to make himself feel better about doing this. It's just I understand now very clearly. This is the only thing I have. It's just a single pick, but, you know, we all add single pick. Sorry, my dog's being crazy. My husband's probably chasing him around the living room. I know my husband spoils me. He hates seeing me in pain. So tonight he came home and he gave me another twenty dollars because he knows I'm going to the doctor's tomorrow and he wants me to stop at Michael's and get some more stuff. Well, it's about two weeks before. The and he's end. gonna blame her it's for that, my dude. Last video. I can't. Probably before. This is pissing me off. Till after that. Um, that's terrible. I wanted to give some items for my mom and, and some other items, but I just want to show you this. Dino, sorry, my husband's home. Dino. Well, it's about two weeks before I finally drop out of society and start this project. Um, sorry. Dino knows, yeah. The cute little puppy, right? So these are the items that are in there. That is kind of weird that a dog would bark at 
the husband. Yeah, dogs do no shit, man. Yeah, dogs are smart. The dog probably just sniffed that something was going on. He was sussing something out with him. The dog's got a sixth sense when it comes to that shit. And now they're hard plastic. Um, stop. Well, it's about two weeks before we finally drop out of society, fully commit to this. Uh, it's probably gonna be my last video till after that. Here we can see that Peter actually oh. does retakes instead of being fully candid, like other videos suggest. This, along with the comments he's made about his appearance, seem to indicate that Peter cares deeply about how people view him. The retake suggests he's purposely curating how he appears to anyone who views these tapes. He wants to make the best possible impression. A how? How in any way do you think you're going to make a good impression with anyone? Again, this could tie back to major depressive <clears throat> disorder and childhood trauma. Teenagers often act as though they have what's known as an invisible audience. The idea that people are watching them all the time and judging their looks and actions. From what we see in the videos, Peter seems to still be acting like this at age 41. This type of behavior can also be found in individuals with narcissistic tendencies. The question oh, yeah. of Peter's intentions would be one of the first mysteries police faced when they became involved in the situation on April 22, 2012. It was a quiet day in the mobile home Cringe. park where the Keller family lived when Yo, seemingly thank out, you, Invader Zimmer. out of nowhere, several neighbors heard what they believed to be an explosion. When they saw flames coming out of the windows of the Keller home, the neighbors summoned the fire department. Firefighters swarmed the home, climbing on top of it, even as the blaze ate through the roof. They had no idea just how seriously they were risking their lives until later. Once the fire was doused, please don't tell me he burnt them. Investigators death. entered the residence. They discovered Peter Keller was nowhere to be found. Iwu spoke with Cindy West, a retired police sergeant who worked on the Keller case, in an exclusive interview. I was actually the public information officer, and it was dude. A if he killed the whole family and the dog in a fire. That is, oh my uh, God. I think it was a weekend because um, uh, I was actually heading out of town and I got the phone call. So I turned around, came back into town and- uh, That's not wanting him dead. That's wanting him to suffer. Arrived up there in North Bend um, and then the investigation, <clears throat> investigation started there. And as the investigation went on, it just snowballed from what the heck happened to, wow, this is bigger than I think anybody thought at the start. For those of you who aren't familiar, a public information officer handles all inquiries about an active case, providing private citizens as well as the media with information that's been approved for release. As such, Cindy was intimately familiar with the inner workings of the Keller case. The day of the fire, tracking down Peter became the police's highest priority. In just a few hours, they located his vehicle parked downtown. The keys were left inside but there was no evidence as to where he might have gone. When they entered his workplace to ask where Peter might be, all his co-workers could offer was that Peter had already left for the day and had stated that he He's might five, be back five. tomorrow. He's 5'5", this is all starting to fall into place. Oh my God, never. it makes sense now. Police also discovered that Peter had recently withdrawn $6,200 from the family bank account. Everything suggested that Peter was either in danger, running, or both. For now, police had no idea where he could be hiding. But they weren't clueless for long. Police got lucky when searching Peter's home and unearthed a hard drive containing Peter's video diaries. What a fucking idiot. Isn't he a goddamn computer technician? Like, oh my God, how stupid can you be? Combined with what else was discovered in the residence, the investigation went from serious to downright bone chilling. Well, before, you know, a while ago, I used to sit here and think, you know, this whole thing is just crazy at times. And then I think about it and then it would make sense. And it's like, okay, his face is, is bone chilling. Yeah. Peter's decisiveness in this clip 
paired with the horrific details of what police <clears throat> had found in the remains of his home, oh my God, would likely be shocking to even the most seasoned law enforcement. Keller ignited an ignitable liquid container in the kitchen. Enforcement official. They were at a complete loss when it came to explaining how and why this had happened. Only time would reveal the haunting truth. When it came to the video entries, they supplied more than just a record of Peter's thoughts. As it turned out, other entries in the video diary and the accompanying photographs would become the key to tracking Peter. Dude, what a fucking idiot. And he, oh my God. Everything about this pisses me off. Retired Sergeant Cindy West was able to share the creative technique the police ended up using. They had photographs that Keller had taken on the mountainside as he's constructing this bunker. From nothing's there to a little bit more to a little bit more. In one of the photos, you can see, I couldn't see it. It looked like a power line in the distance. Uh, so you're looking off the mountain toward, which would be North Bend, the city. You can barely see this power line and something else. Again, I didn't think it was a power line. But our detective, Mike Mellis, says, I think that's a power line. I think that down there is probably the city. And then according to these other photos, there's a couple streams nearby. So he does a lot of investigation and says, well, it's got to be in one of these two points then. And I, I'm like, I don't know how he came up with that, but he was exactly right. Damn. Combined with reports of Peter's truck being regularly parked at a <clears throat> specific trailhead, this was enough information for police to start canvassing the area to search for Camp Keller. It took six days, but eventually they succeeded. The smoke visible in this footage came from Peter's makeshift chimney and was instrumental in leading the police to Camp Keller. What a dumbass, dude. However, rushing in and making an arrest wasn't going to be an option. They had no idea how many people might be inside or what their intentions were. Remember, Peter had been stockpiling weapons and ammunition at home. And thanks to his videos, which were discovered when police reviewed the recordings that were not destroyed in the house fire, they knew he likely had firearms at his camp Little did they know what else they would uncover. They also knew that there was a chance they could be dealing with a hostage situation. A direct approach could endanger Peter's life if he was being held captive or spook him Call if he had hostages of his yeah. own. The dude's so dumb. Like he did all this shit to try to escape and he didn't think about his fucking footage, his vlogs. He didn't think about his pictures. He didn't think about the smoke coming out at the top. Like... Wow. <laughs> they needed to make whoever That's was crazy. inside come to them. You guys on a number three side? Can you get to that window and break it out or throw a gas in there? Brian, there's a, there looks like a, a, a slot or a window that's propped open uh, in the back directly towards the, uh, the dirt wall. But uh, I couldn't see it. You got something over it. Maybe you guys can throw a log through it or something. But if we throw a number two in that ditch, it should cycle right up into the tarp, should push it right into the structure. That's exactly what they decide to do. The response team keeps the bunker surrounded in the hopes that the gas canister will drive those inside out of the bunker and straight to the waiting forces. But after about 10 minutes, nothing has changed. Yeah, it's dissipating finally. The, the first one you sent in is dissipating. You want me to throw a 98 under the window? The open window where we first gas. Yeah, if you can do it from your position. With the gas canisters having no effect, the team is forced to reconsider their tactics. So for planning purposes, if this gas uh, isn't going to work, we may have the command post try and locate like a, a wildland fire pump and hose that can pump a large volume of water into this. I'm thankful he's so stupid because he didn't get away in the end. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, there is that. At least he didn't last long out there. Uh, I think we could probably utilize this creek. We just need enough hose and a pumping station to get it. Dude, why did he have to you kill know, him in, like, the want. worst way possible, dude? We've got dude. your photos showing this bunker may have multiple levels. Big copy. This information actually came from Peter directly and the self-recorded videos that they found in his burned-out house. Well... This is the end of the day. I'm getting wrapped up, getting ready to leave. I don't know if you can see me, but it's kind of one last look 
at everything. Wow, That's beautiful. Ceramic fireplace, wood stove, whatever. Gorgeous. Pretty dark. Now we're going upstairs. Wow, amazing. This is where most of my what supplies are. What if he died are. inside the bunker by accident? I hope so. Pretty well stocked up. It's my window. down on the wood stove. And that pretty much wraps it up for the day. Finally, police resorted to throwing a grenade towards the bunker. When even an actual explosion failed to get results, police knew that they would have to be the ones to approach. After a full day of besieging the bunker, they decided to break through the roof. I'm assuming he's probably dead or not you there. You might be wondering why a house fire investigation demanded such an extensive response. As a matter of fact, it didn't. After what? assessing the situation, investigators concluded that they were dealing with arson. But that would all change when they made their way into the home and stumbled upon a disturbing discovery. Uh... It wasn't a subtle attempt either. The remains of a red gas can were found melted onto the stove where it had been placed in a skillet to heat up until it ignited. Police found several other gas cans throughout the residence, boxes of ammunition, and a homemade explosive device. What the fuck? How did, how did no could one only see that? How did no one know? to be triggered by the fire I mean, maybe you in locked order him to in destroy or something. the house and everything inside. <clears throat> had the fire team arrived just a few moments later, it could have gone off while they were on the roof, potentially costing them their lives. Police believed that this evidence was meant to be destroyed in the fire, along with the video diaries. Oh. But those items were hardly the most shocking thing. Yeah, I don't discovered. understand the skillet. I there guess were two bodies get out. in the bedroom of the Keller uh. home, untouched by the fire. Oh. Tragically, the bodies were identified to be those of Lynette and Kayleen Keller. Oh, they didn't. They didn't burn. Okay. They had both been shot in the head. Dude, thank God they didn't die to a fire. At least there's that. Nice. <laughs> nice, look at all that smoke, oh my gosh. Okay, make sure you don't touch this. Okay. Because this gets really freaking hot. It seems that what Peter's video diaries have been hinting at the entire time was killing his own Thank God family. they were shot. Yeah, at least they didn't burn to death. Part of me has a hard time even imagining doing what I'm gonna do. But as I think about it, I always come up to the same conclusion every time. I'm starting to get more okay with it. Retired Sergeant Cindy West was once again willing to share her thoughts on the tragedy. I don't think either of them knew it was coming. Again, based on the conversations that uh, we had with friends of both of them, it sounded like he was a loving, great husband. Uh, so I think they're both blindsided by it. And... Um, you know, I, I don't know. I just, this case just racks my brain. Uh, I, there's no way it's ever going to resolve in my brain because you just think, I mean, people who are depressed, especially like, for example, if he's like a narcissist or some shit or a, or a psychopath, for example, they're very good at blending in. They're very good at acting like everything's fine. Why? Not yeah, the only... dog knew. The dog definitely knew. Yeah, I didn't say anything about the Did dog. Did he kill his wife and his daughter? But based on the friends and neighbors, he had this dog that went no. everywhere with him, hiking or apparently to go build a bunker, you know, for, for all these years. And he killed the no! dog too. He was afraid that the dog would give him away in the bunker. And so he killed no, the dog too. Oh, dude. Again. There's no explanation. The dog knew, man. The dog fucking knew. I mean, I get that he obviously had some sort of mental illness. Dipstick wasn't hitting the oil with him, but it just.
Dipstick wasn't hitting the oil with him. This makes you shake your head. I've seen a lot. I've never of heard that one before. Career, a lot of bad things. Uh, you just shake your head about, you know, sometimes when things happen. But this case really, really got to me. Is that poop? There's toilet paper there. Are we looking at poop? Cindy shared with us what happened when police finally made entry into Camp Keller. And what they find inside the bunker is even more shocking than anyone expected. Oh, boy. When uh, our uh, TAC-30, a.k.a. SWAT guys, discover the bunker, of course, they surround it, make sure everybody's safe, let everybody know what's going on before they hail to him saying, hey. Two people die, chat, I sleep, dog dies, chat, real shit. Dude, it, we expected them to die. Throughout the entire video, we expected them to die. Also, dogs dying? I don't know. A little bit sadder. <laughs> okay, it's not actually sad. But still, I feel like when it comes to, like, for example, movies or shows or games or anything like that, anytime a dog dies, it's so sad. But when a human dies, it's like, whatever. You know? Hey, you know, come on out with your it's hands sadder. up. Yada, yada, all that. And it was just a short time after they initially made, tried to make contact with him that they heard a pop. So... They didn't know, did he have an accidental discharge? Was it something else? Uh, they didn't know. When the walls of Camp Keller were finally breached, police discovered that Peter had stayed true to his word and ended his life when faced with capture, soon after the police surrounded his stronghold. Perhaps this was Peter's only intention all along. He wanted to achieve this teenage fantasy of living bitch. out underground in the woods before he died. But he had no end game other than his own death. Then why didn't you just kill yourself and not take your family with you? Well, the fact that he was found was significant. We were worried what he might do to somebody else. <clears throat> um, if he's, you know, brazen enough to kill his wife and his daughter, then what what's he going to do to somebody else? But I think there was a sense of relief that it was over, uh, that he had been apprehended, you know, not apprehended, but that he was finished with his crime spree that nobody else got hurt. Uh, there was so much potential for, for injuries to citizens and all the officers involved that uh, it was a, definitely a sense of relief. The camp was turned over to King County Department of Natural Resources, who eventually destroyed the bunker. Peter's cash hoard was donated to a memorial scholarship established in memory of Lynette and Kayleen. Oh, dude, that was rough. Just allowing me the privilege. That was, that was rough. Ruff. 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 Now it's time to walk away. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribe? I'll thank you either way. you I hope you return tell your friend or your mother to get me more views please